Hey Booktube, I'm back with another uh, New World November related video. Uh, I have been just diving into this, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, New World November, for those who don't know, is a, an uh, event created by uh, Betty and Stott over at the Bookish Bryants, and it is hosted by a bunch of people. Uh, Steve Donahue, uh, Sean D. Stanfast, Mark Richardson at and reads brandy at booklectic mindy at mindy's book journey b and b david wardrop uh pick back chunky and noah at everyone who reads a month in verse um and some other people who i'm forgetting uh and the goal of new old november is to read uh science fiction Particularly short story science fiction, uh, anything under about 250 pages. Uh, and last and each week there are prompts. Last week we did a prompt on aliens, and one of the stories I read was by Ted Cheng, uh, and that was Story of Your Life. And it, it originally was released in some periodical, and then was re-released in a book called Story of Your Life and Others, uh, uh, and uh, was made into a movie called Arrival, which a lot of you may have seen. And I saw the movie before I read the, before I read the story, and I decided to read it out of this big collection of uh, science fiction short stories edited by Jeff and Anne Vandermeer. These are the guy Jeff Vandermeer wrote... Uh, the Southern Reach Trilogy, Annihilation, Authority, and Acceptance. I've read the first one of those. And that was also made into a movie. <clears throat> um, and he's also edited a ton of stuff. I own his uh, Big Book of Science Fiction and his, and his uh, we The Weird. Like a bunch of weird fiction writing. You got Neil Gaiman in there, Lovecraft, uh, Algernon Blackwood... Michael Chabon, uh, um, Octavia E. Butler, um, Shirley, J Shirley Jackson, uh, there's a whole host of people. <clears throat> yeah. Tentacle monster in my throat. Um, <laughs> but, uh, preliminary the way, I decided to read another Ted Chang story I Check this book out from the library. I tried to find Story of Your Life and Others because I really wanted to read. There were several in there that I found really interesting, including one that looked at um, a it was a speculative fiction book where the Old Testament, Old Testament uh, uh, Bible, is literally true and. Not just literally true, but is evident in the world. So pe when people die, you can see their souls going down into hell. Through cra and you can see hell and through cracks in the uh, ground. And there are angels that appear out of nowhere and cause miracles and horrific injuries and deaths at the same time. Unfortunately, I couldn't find that volume, but I did find um, this, Exhalation. Uh, and I've only read one story in here so far. I, 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 went, I went on Wikipedia and checked the basic synopsis for each story. Or, I rather, I rather scan the, the synopses. Kind of scan of keywords. And, <clears throat> I know that, uh, The Merchant and the Alchemist Gate, the first book story in, in, in this, correlates to time travel. And that exhalation seems to correlate to, uh, apocalyptic, so I'm going to leave those to later. Oh, I never explained the rest of the prompts. Uh, first week was aliens, second week, this week, is AI, third week is time travel, and fourth week is apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic or dystopian. Um, and I think The Great Silence has an apocalyptic theme also. So I might read some of the other ones in here that aren't AI related, but the one I read today, or finished it today, it's actually quite long, it's uh, about 110 pages long. 
uh, long comparatively to some of the other stuff in here. Most of these are only... Actually, yeah, they're all about, you know, 20, 30 pages long. Uh, Exhalation is 21 pages. Merchant Alchemist Gate is, uh, 34 pages. This one was, was double, probably more than double what everything else was. Uh, I think the only other one that even comes close is, um... <clears throat> The truth of fact, the truth of fact, the truth of feeling, which is 51 pages. Um, and the life cycle of Solve for Objects is an AI story, and it is, it was wonderful. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, what it's about is it's about, um, it's a speculative future story where there is, um, a virtual reality world called Data Earth. Um, at the start of the story, there there are two primary characters, Derek and, a and Anna. Anna gets a job at a, at a place called uh, Neuroplast, and they are trying to create digits, these little uh, uh, personable AI entities with, with personalities, and they're trying to make them Instead of just giving them a defined personality, a defined set of knowledge, they uh, give them a code that kind of mirrors a uh, that mirrors the abil the brain's ability, neuroplasticity, plasticity to uh, mold itself. Uh, that's where that term comes from, neuroplastic, neuroplasticity, that's when the brain can, uh, create, uh, links in it, ne neural links to, uh, to learn, to, uh, create habits, memory, that sort of stuff. Um, and that's what these, uh, AI do, is that they... Uh, take a, as they have a avatar, a cutesy uh, avatar like there's two of them are pandas and one of them is a tiger. There's, there's a little cute robot, uh, but they start off as, as basically toddlers, actually less than toddlers. They they, they know nothing. They they have to uh, learn everything like babies, uh, and they they grow. They they learn, and the idea is to sell these, kind of like Tomodachi pets, um, uh, and it, it goes on from there. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but in, like, the third chapter, the, um, the company starts to experience hardship, and there are other companies rising up. Eventually, date. I mean, now I'm getting into actual spoilers, so, uh, the story is really good. I, I really enjoy Ted Chang's writing. He, um, is very poetic, uh, and he really makes you care about these neuroplasts. In fact, I kind of want to read one part early on where the neuroplasts, uh, are trying out a robot body. So not an A, they're not, a they're AI, but now, uh, a kind of another company has come up that kind of piggybacks off the, uh, success of the Neoplasts. And, um, and other digents also. There are other companies making these digents. Uh, and, uh, so the company creates a robot which you can port to the Neoplast, to Data Earth, have the Neoplast kind of hop off and then move around in real in the real world, with a cute little, uh, screen on the face that shows the Neuroplast's face. Uh, and so in this scene, you got Jax, the, the robot, uh, the robot Neuroplast, who is inside an actual robot, walking around. Alright. Alright. 
On screen, Jack steps through the portal, and in the reception area, the little robot comes alive. The robot's head lights up to display Jack's face, turning his oversized head into a bubble helmet he's wearing. The design is a way of maintaining the resemblance to the Digen's original avatar without having to produce custom bodies. Jack looks like a copper robot wearing a suit of obsidian armor. Jack turns around to take in the entire room. Wow, he stops turning. Wow, wow, sound different. Wow, wow, wow. It's okay, Jack, says Anna. Remember, remember, I told you your voice might sound different in the outside world. The information packet from Sarah Mech had warned about this. A metal and plastic chassis conducts sound in a way that avatars and Data Earth don't. Jack looks up to face Anna, and she marvels at the sight of him. She knows that he's not really in the body. Jax's code is still being run on the network, and this robot is just a fancy peripheral. But the, I, but the illusion is perfect. And even after all their interaction in Data Earth, it's thrilling to have Jack stand in front of her and look her in the eye. Hi Jax, she says. It's me, Anna. You wear a different avatar, Jax says. In the outside world, we call it a body, not an avatar. And people don't switch their bodies here. We can only do that in Data Earths. Here we always wear the same body. Jax pauses to consider that. You look this always? Well, I can wear different clothes, but yes, this is the way I look. Jax walks over for a closer view, and Anna squats, elbows on knees. They're almost the same height. Jax peers at her arms, and then her forearms. She's wearing short sleeves. He brings his head closer, and Anna can hear the faint whir whir of the robot's camera eyes refocusing. Little hairs on your arms, he says. She laughs. Her avatar has arms as smooth as the baby's. Yes, there are. Jack brings up a hand and extends a thumb and a forefinger to grab some of the hairs. He makes a couple of attempts. But like the pinchers of a claw, claw vending machine, his fingers keep slipping off. Then he pinches her skin and pulls back. Ow, Jax, that hurts. Sorry. Jax scrutinizes Anna's face. Little, little holes all over your face. Anna can feel the amusement of the others in the room. Those are called pores, he says, standing. We can talk about my skin later. Right now, why don't you take a look around the room? I just love that. The the, the digit the uh, neuroplasts are very, very cute, especially early on when they're just learning. Um and there's lots of uh fun moments with that. The story also explores some pretty big ideas, notably uh whether the whether the neuroplasts are people, whether you should consider them humans, animals, something different, whether they have rights. Uh Sometimes in pretty excruciating detail. I don't mean excruciating into the level of detail, but the kind of details. Um, and this is not a, uh, a problem for me. I thought the story was very good. I thought the, the way it explored certain ideas was very good. And I think it explored some, uh, some needed details for this kind of story. Uh, what kind of rights do AI have? But there are some aspects that are, to be perfectly blunt, kind of creepy. Uh, and so I, I do want to issue essentially kind of a trigger warning. Uh, in that this story does contain some, some, some messed up stuff. The story itself, I would say, is not messed up. Although the ending is kind kind of vague whether what's going to happen to the digits is good or bad, or at least some of the digits. Uh, and this does kind of get into spoiler stuff, I'm going to try to leave as much of it out, but it's needed in case you want to avoid the story because of this reason. So if you're, if you're very thick-skinned, uh, I would say just go ahead and read it. It's not that bad. It's not gratuitous, it's not graphic, it's nothing like that. It's just more of the theme itself is kind of kind of messed up. Or could be considered messed up. But one of them is definitely messed up. One of them is 
ambiv is uh, ambiguous, I'd say. But those two themes are in relation to how some people use and in some cases misuse the digits. There's a lot of information early on that the, the digits are have circuit breakers to prevent pain so that people can't hurt them, but they can be neglected, so and there are issues with them being uh shut down, uh or put into into suspension, which is basically like like cryogenically freezing almost the digit. It stops them in time. And this causes trauma and and fear to some magicians. Fearing that they will be that they will be locked down and when one of them comes out of being locked down, being suspended, uh, he's confused and upset. But one issue that shows up is you find out that a digit got copied, a hacker came into the system, stole the source code, removed that circuit breaker, and then made a video torturing the uh, digit. And the, the obvious thing to say there is, of course, that would happen. There are people who would 100% do that. There are people who torture animals on video. Sometimes they show up on YouTube. Uh, usually they are taken down, of course, but the YouTube, uh, but by comparison, there are other sites, uh, which aren't hard to find, which show the same thing. Animals being tortured gratuitously, uh, uh, so 100% that would happen. You, you would, you would find, uh, hackers doing the same thing, and because they feel pain, they have the brain structure of a living entity. It's torture of an actual entity. And it is it is disturbing. Again, it doesn't go deep into it. It just kind of ha shows the video being played and then leaves it. But there are... That, that isn't there. The other kind of icky subject matter is sex. Um, the digits... Uh, there's, a, there's a key idea that, that the digits that one of the companies uh, wants to use digits, the neuroplasts, for sex, for sex toys, but 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 in a way where it's consensual. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into it, but that could also be considered uh, a bother to some. Uh, is that bestiality? Is that using a product? Is that using a uh, a conscious but non-human entity? Those are all very different things. I mean, <laughs> it, it's an uncomfortable question, uncomfortable thought, but uh, there's obviously moral differences between having sex with an animal, having sex with a sex toy or a sex doll, and having sex with a alien, a, a sapient alien, or a, some other kind of weird speculative Entity. Uh, and these, these ideas are explored a lot in other stories. Um, but part of the problem with this one is perhaps more disturbing is because you get to know the, the neuroplasts. Um, they have personalities. They have, in some sense, kind of childlike personalities. So the story is really good. Uh, I don't think that subject matter detracted from it at all, but I think it strengthened it. I think it, science fiction usually looks at dark material, and this story by the comparison was not super not dark, but it had to look at some of that darkness to be, um, to be accurate. So I liked it, but, uh, I wanted to give that information for anyone from the fence who might not want to read that, so, uh, <clears throat> But again, I thought it was definitely good. I'm going to continue reading this. Uh, there's another story in here. <clears throat> uh, Daisy's Patent Automatic Nanny, which I might read today. Or I might read some other stuff. I've, I don't want to read them all at once. I don't know what my next video will be. I've got so many of these volumes now. I went to the bookstore yesterday, and I bought... It was a used bookstore. I bought four little volumes of Theodore Surgeon. 
because I really liked um, um, the two stories I've read by him, Microcosmic God, and uh, um. Soul Star of Loneliness. I got a book by Ben Bova, Mars, I got uh uh Philip J. Dix, uh Do Anchors from Electric Sheep, which I very well might read for this event. I got I Robot also, which I might read, and several other Isaac Asimov stuff. Uh and I got several different anthologies. So I may read some of those and might have a video up for some of them. Uh I'm not sure yet though. So, I hope you all are having a good New Year's November. Hope you all have a good non-fiction November. I have not started on that at all, but I'm hoping to get some reading over that also today. Uh, and I will let you all go. Uh, so yeah. Bye, BookTube.